103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, May 2nd. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Ahoy there. <laughs> Ahoy. I guess Dread Pirate uh, recognizes that language. Uh, we, have Dread, <laughs> we have Dread Pirate. We have uh, Doubtfire, George Buffalo, George Brooklyn, uh, Boudreaux, all the way from UK, uh, Dread Pirate Higgs, I mentioned, and the John Richards. Hello, all. That's, Welcome. That is funny you said Boudreaux from the UK because John is like, wait, I'm from the UK. What's going on here? Well, that's right. John is from the UK, too. <laughs> I work so. at the UK. So <laughs> look at his house in the, in, in the background there. Well, we're certainly an international program. That's and uh, Dread, Dread Pirate Higgs is sailing the high seas of British Columbia. There you go. That's Very true. Cool. We are international. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Uh, for those not familiar with it, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences, and conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. And today, we'll be talking about religious irony and hypocrisy and weird moments thereof. I call the show, Oh, the Irony! (laughs) That works. Yeah. And do we have an invocation today? Yeah. You do. Hail Marinara, full of spice. The flying spaghetti monster is filled with thee. Tasty art thou among sauces, and blessed is the fruit of thy jar, tomatoes, although fools believe they are vegetables. Holy marinara, chief amongst toppings, save a plate for us now, and at about six o'clock when dinner is served, if you would be so kind. Wrong. How can no one take that seriously? That's the thing. Like, can't they, how can I mean, anyone hear right? that and be like, sure, you can wear whatever right? hat you want on your license? That makes exactly such an obvious thing. Hey, mm-hmm. I have, uh, I think I already outlined your moment of hypocrisy, but I do want to outline um, moments of irony when dealing with religious people. And I'd want to hear everyone's story. We've got a full house today, and I'm, I'm happy that everybody's here. Uh, I'll throw out just one quick one, and then we'll start throwing it around to to see who has shared moments of similar uh, times dealing with people who strongly believe in a dogmatic God belief, but also have like this weird hang up. So, like, we have a back, we have a book club at work, and the book club was currently reading a book on this woman who's a therapist and the and the scandalous stories she's had with her patients. And the book's called "You Should Talk to Somebody," and it's really funny, but. Uh, we opened up the discussion on therapy and the conversations tend to go on different tangents, but we brought up the idea that they actually have therapist apps. You can download right now on the Google play store or Apple store where you can talk to like a face or a disembodied text box and it'll hear you out. And it'll just like, you know, voice the text, everything that you said, and maybe even highlight some words for you, maybe even ask you some great questions. And I said, that's like a really cool thing for people who may not necessarily have time to go out to a therapist or may have hangups with the idea of therapy. Wouldn't that be a cool thing to just have something in your pocket that you can always talk to. And the guy who was the most ardent Christian in the room was like, I don't like that idea because I don't like the concept of talking to something that doesn't answer back to me. Like, you know, asking and, and, and talking to something that's just this disembodied thing. I am very uncomfortable with that. And he had the whole cross and everything like that. He had the tattoos on and I'm just like, oh, the irony. I didn't know how to deal with it. So I'd love to hear, <laughs> I'd like to hear like feedback on that. Or if you guys had similar stories like that in the past. That uh, dread part, I'm going to throw it up to you because you're you're my buddy. What what do you got? You got comments on that story that I just told you? Has that ever happened to you before? Um. Well, yeah, of course, I'm dealing with it all the time. Mm. Uh, but uh, certainly in my case, um, it's dealing with the hypocrisy of policy mm. um, under the guise of you know being fair to uh, religious groups. Um, in in the case of my my headband. I just uh, recently got a letter back from the ICBC, the Insurance Corporation of British Columbia, who said, well, on April 14th, you went in to uh, 
get a photo taken and apply under um, religious uh, um, accommodation. And in fact, that's not what I did. It's because oh. I was denied, I've been denied so many times under this religious accommodation thing. I went in under the policy that they have <clears throat> for hair accessories. Right. Right. I didn't right. say, I didn't even say I was a member of a religious group. It just so happens I have a symbol on my thing. And unless you know what, unless you know what it is, you don't know what it is. Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So the, so the letter was very pointed in saying, well, you came under this religious accommodation thing and, and therefore we're denying you. So now this is, and this is the coffin, this is the coffin nail I was looking for, right? Because now we can go and say that they are actually discriminating because right. I made no overtures that I was representing a religious group or was seeking religious accommodation. I was seeking an accommodation which is ordinarily allowed to members of the public. Right. And they have denied me this under the, under stating that it's a religious thing. Um, so we got, so like, I think the, the hypocrisy here is like, you could wear a headband in British Columbia and get mm -hmm. your driver's license and picture yeah. taken. Yeah. And so they de specifically denied you for your headband picture because there was an iconography that most people wouldn't recognize anyway of right. religious icon, but it's not a religious piece of headgear that you're wearing. You just have right. the standard thing that any citizen can wear. And it right. had a symbol on it. Because it's not a head covering, as you can see. And, that's, and that's <laughs> the, that is the distinction that's being made. So my hairline is right about there. And, you know, it's, so it's above the hairline, uh, but it doesn't cover the head. So it's not even considered a head covering. It's a hair accessory. Now, help me out. Is BC so small that people could see you coming? It's like, oh, here's this guy again. Let's get ready to hit the <laughs> denial button. Um, BC is <laughs> <the longest. laughs> uh, I Well, I suppose because it's been in the paper now uh, mm. enough times that um, even in the Toronto Star, like the when the, uh, the Supreme Court uh, judgment came out. Um, so the word is getting around. And, and actually, there are more and more people joining uh, our uh, Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster of British Columbia Facebook group. So, yeah, and you're all encouraged to to see what uh, what's going on. John, what do you got? Yeah, well, I'm wondering whether um, a hearty pirate's uh, encounter was due to the fact that they suspected that his headband was just the beginning of a slippery slope. You know, he may be saving up for the rest of the hat. Ah, that's, but it's not for them to exactly judge it then it if he's still within the boundaries. Like, for right. law, it's them to say, like, hey, do this, don't do this. But for him to do what you're allowed to do, which is, he literally had a poster saying you could wear a headband. I'm like, okay, yeah. cool. He's wearing a headband. It's not a religious covering. Like, I've never seen <laughs> something like that. It's a headband with an icon on it. And I just feel there is that hypocrisy there. It always makes me a little upset to see that. Yeah. Uh, Dread. Yeah, there, here, here was the here you go. Here was the policy. This is the ICBC policy. I was yeah, following. he's literally wearing. Oh, so people who so are up there uh, is acceptable. Yeah, he's showing a picture that has a bunch of people with headbands on it. It's very clear that he's within you know the realm. Though I would love to see what would happen if you had a cross on one one day and walked in. And and I'm going to try, see if I can conscript others to go yes. with similar headbands. Yes, yes, yes. Or, you know, or crosses. Yes, 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 so Take yes. this headband and put it around my neck. No, no. <laughs> you wouldn't no, be able to see no, it seriously. because of your beard. <laughs> well, Dread. get somebody else to do it. Boudreaux, you know I mean? Boudreaux and Buffalo would both agree with me. The perfect control for this experiment would be another person with the white headband, yep. but mm -hmm. with, with the Christian cross on it. Right. Yep. And say, hey, you said no to this, but you said yes to this. That is religious discrimination. Yeah. This guy's yeah. getting mm -hmm. you, and I'm not that's getting That's exactly where we're headed. Got to get that. Got to get that yeah. white headband with the cross. Anyone dare say, go shaved head, like someone with a shaved head do it too. Just just to be absolutely precise. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, it, it only costs seventeen dollars to get your photo retaken. Oh, so perfect. you know, say you choose, you lose weight, or you change your facial hair, you can go in and voluntarily pay seventeen bucks. Nice. As it turns out, that is the voting membership fee for the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, of British Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very, very cool. John, I want to throw it up to you. Like, you got comments, but I also want to know a, a story of hypocrisy from you. Oh, you right. Well, I just wanted to uh, ref respond to Dread, because in uh, not a million miles away from you, Dread, in Quebec, 
Mm. They've just passed laws to prohibit the wearing of religious symbols by uh, government or you know, state employees during right. work hours. Yeah. So is that relevant to what, what your encounter? Um, you do I? You're not no, an employee. I, uh, well, I mean, it, it does speak to the larger issue of of this whole debate, right? But I think in, in terms of what, you know, just trying to be um, see, like a Sikh uh, would wear a turban yeah. as yeah. an identity. It's yeah. a symbol of identity. But ICBC goes under the pretext that they're accommodating a religion that prohibits them from removing their headgear for the purposes of photo ID, which oh. is not true. Right. Oh. It's just not true. So they've invented this uh, this condition under which people are allowed to wear their uh, headgear and under which they can arbitrarily say, well, your religion doesn't prohibit you from wearing it, so you're out of luck. Yeah, I feel like- so it's, it's a double standard. And John, just to comment on that, I feel like it's a problematic situation to say, hey, don't wear your religious garb. It should just be wear whatever you want and we'll see, you know, like after the fact, whoever has a problem with it to an extent. Because if you say, mm -hmm. hey, you can't wear religious headgear, does that mean Muslims can't serve in government? Does that mean Sikhs can't serve in government? Like right. you're and setting a standard already that's like sort of for very specific demographic that make it yeah. hard for other people to get those kinds of representation. Mm -hmm. John, what's your hypocrisy story? Well, uh, I meet hypocrisy a lot. <laughs> on social media, where I argue with people who want to rubbish evolution, and they come up with all manner of uh, false ways in which they can disprove evolution, so they think. But then when I ask them back, you know, can you give some evidence to support your idea, your proposition of creation, mm. suddenly they go quiet. Uh... That's, that's hypocrisy. That's a double standard. Right. They always want you to, to have the burden of evidence and they want to be yep. right by default if they exactly. see you struggle. I don't mm -hmm. like that. I find that that's kind of a, what do you call it? What do you call that? Uh, I'm going through the words of list of words I can't say on the radio. Uh, dishonest <laughs> yes. conversation? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> oh, you can, say v you can say VS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a little VS, right? D disingenuous yeah. is a good Dis word. I like, I like to yeah. stay with the basics. They were lying. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't actually meet a very great deal of irony because irony is meant to be humorous. Mm. What I meet is sarcasm, which is meant mm. to be contemptuous. Sure, that's, sure. That's Where's our I sarcastic think. Christians? That's what you want. You want the ones yeah, that are like, yeah. of course Jesus died on the cross. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it hurts. Like, oh, I feel weird even saying that way. Oh, man, that's bad. But yeah, you do meet you do meet a lot of people who are saying like, "Hey, prove to me that I'm wrong," right? Like that tends to be a lot of the Christian right. starting points when that really shouldn't be the base right. of the conversation, right? Of course, it's them to prove that they are right or at least have positions that are worth discussing discussing as an option mm. to be right, and that's their struggle. It's not our point to prove that. Larry, what do you got? Well, that leads us to uh, their rejection of all the other religious claims. Sure. They believe all of their own magical creatures and miracles, but with absolutely no evidence at all. Yep. But all the other religions, creatures and miracles are just silly. Right. You know, their fabrications are wrong. Yeah, uh, Pastorians no, get that a lot. Right. No grounds for it at all. Right. And if I'm, I'm even going back to my book club story, if I said, hey, you know, talking to a disembodied <laughs> voice all day with your problems, that's kind of like praying. They'll be like, that's not true. Praying proves my God. Well, you wouldn't say every single person who prays to a God <clears throat> is pr that is praying to a real God, right? It's like, well, no, they're just praying to a cult or a false God. Like when I pray to my God, that's the real God. It's like, well... <laughs> We're back at square one then. Because <laughs> a lot of people seem to be praying to things that don't actually exist, potentially. Boudreaux, I'd love to hear about your hypocrisy story. What do you got for me? Yeah, so uh, this one kind of ties into what, what Dredd was saying about his his icon on his headband. You either, you either know what it is or you don't, mm -hmm. right? And and I've got the same icon on the back of my car for the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Um, and uh, I have a shirt that I love to wear that is has the fine spaghetti monster on it and it says something to the effect this shirt has the fine spaghetti monster on it that makes it cooler than your shirt and i wear it any chance i get 
Um, uh, honestly, at the airports is my favorite time to wear it when I was allowed to fly. <clears throat> um, but, and I, I, I very often get comments on it of people either loving the shirt because it's a wild looking <laughs> spaghetti mess with a couple of meatball eyeballs. Sure. And it, it says what it says. And people very often say, oh, oh, I love your shirt. I love your shirt. And I have this weird distinction to where I'm trying to figure out, do they know what it means? Or do they just think it's neat and unique? Do they think I, it's a Green Day band or something like that? Like a cover band? Or something? just pop art. I there, love spaghetti. Yeah, there, yeah there's some uh. like, people either people either love spaghetti or they just think it's <laughs> it's silly. Um, and it and it makes me think of the article I sent Dread. I think a few years ago, it, not an article. It was a joke, a book of jokes. And the joke was, what do you call a, a, a spaghetti that is pretending to be something else? And it's uh, impasta. Um, <laughs> but the picture they used in the book is the flying spaghetti monster. Like, oh, like no. no doubt, without a doubt. Um, they just want to Google okay, to start it. it Bad jokes. Oh, yeah. wow. Look at John. He's, he's ready to go. But, Larry, it makes me wonder, did they Google it and just grab that image? Or was without the person a secret fan of the flying spaghetti monster and they just kind of sneak yeah. that in there. So right. I, yeah. I don't know if it's really it was a child's book, right? It was a child's yeah. book, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Guys, so we're at this fun. Qualifies. No, yeah. no, no. We're at the really, really fun part where we, Eric started a story and he's trying to make it make sense halfway I'm through the story. <laughs> so I, I don't want to say anything. I'm pressuring yeah. him to like stick yeah. this landing. Go for it. Keep going. No, and, I, and I'm trying <laughs> round peg, square hole. But no, it, it, I find the irony in it that it, it, I have this secret, you know, the icon, the secret um, thing I'm a fan <laughs> of. Yeah. And it's so hard for me to tell if the people uh like my shirt or or in every once in a while they'll say yeah i've been touched by the noodley noodle appendage job. you found right. the yeah. irony in that situation that's wonderful there you go. everyone has to give that guy a pat on the back good job Bujo. <laughs> yeah so it's like is he complimenting me because of the reason why i'm wearing it or does he just like meatballs yep. and pasta or whatever i can tell yep. you this if it makes you feel any better whenever i go to walmart and i see someone wearing like a obviously atheist based shirt like science is real blah 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 or some snarky thing i will go out of my way to be like hey man i like your shirt and he'll like eye contact and be like we're fighting the fight <laughs> Same. Same. I'm like yep 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 and we just go up and continue to get our nachos and, and springs and stuff whatever you do at walmart but yeah uh scott i would love actually scott i would love to know if you have a crazy shirt that is, or any a religious iconography that, that purports to maybe what you used to believe, maybe as a Jehovah Witness, or uh, uh, as your new atheist life, did you get inspired to like go to Hot Topic and get a bunch of sarcastic teas? I was thinking about doing that, but not yet. I haven't got anything like that yet, but I, I have been thinking about that and looking nice. at some stuff, but that'd be cool. Okay, okay, okay. But not yet. You got a story for hypocrisy, Scott? Mm -hmm. Have you had a moment? You know I do. Oh man, let's go into, <laughs> let's go into you it. You already know. <laughs> no, but <laughs> last week, uh, the, the thing that comes to my mind right now is last, oh, man, week, last I, week. No, I was um, yeah, talking to a uh, Islamic friend of mine on Facebook, but he was basically trying to make the case, um, trying to get me to follow his logic. Okay. He was trying to. He was trying to. Def we we're talking about epistemology about God. So he wanted to start with, with the, um, some sort of Kalam cosmological argument with me. So he was saying, look, just so I can translate, are... just so I can translate yeah. for the radios, you were talking yep. about yep. what's the best way to know that a God exists. And he says, well, the universe had a beginning and therefore, and that's basically what you were saying. So perfect. Right. Yeah. So in the conversation, um, his, argument was you've got he wanted me to agree is there there are necessary things and then there are contingent things would you agree like whoa you know, sure so contingency is I... something that depends on something else to exist as it does okay so of course you know it's like i can follow that i understand sure. that cool so how does this get us to your god so he's like okay well here's the thing the universe, everything that exists are things that don't exist of themselves. Would you agree? Are, are they contingent things? I'm like, well, let's just grant, I don't know, but let's just grant that 
they are. So how does this get you to your God? Okay, you. So that's like, a big grant, by the way. That's a yeah, very it's a big, big grant, grant, and he understood that. That, that is literally so, the biggest of grants that you could have given him, but yeah. Right, so I granted him all that. Basically, <laughs> if I, just to make a long story short, I granted him all of his premises mm-hmm. just, just okay. to hear his argument, just because sure. I wanted to get to it. Sure. So he's like, okay, so <clears throat> you're telling – so he says, so you're agreeing – that the universe is dependent on some necessary thing that isn't contingent, that is eternal, absolute, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, sure. I'll grant you that. How does that get you to your God? Uh, then he was like, well, it's got to be a God. And I'm like, well, could these contingent things uh, uh, be grounded in something that's not a God, that's still eternal, absolute, like some unknown law of nature? No, that can't be the case. It, it has to be my God, Allah. It can't be Jesus. It can't. Oh, be it Zeus. can't be Zeus. It can't be, huh. can't be multiverses. It can't be. It's got to be Allah. Okay, so how is that? Just within your argument, how is that going to work? Yeah. It's ironic. Like how? How? Like why the special pleading? Like right. You know, you do understand that special pleading. Yeah, it, it kind of is, but you know, still, it 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 makes sense. Larry, thoughts? No. Yeah, just one other <laughs> further step. I grant them all that when I do my Ask an Atheist booth uh, table, when I sit out and talk to people, I grant them all that. And I even grant them the fact that it was a God. Wow. And I still say, how does it get to your particular God? And they can't bridge that gap. There's just no way they can. They point to the Bible. I said, well, the Bible points to a particular God, but it doesn't. I mean, it's not proof that a the God that created the universe is that God. All the other holy books of all the other religions say it's their God. You know, the silly thing is the Bible even purports that there are other gods because I think one of yeah. God's biggest rules is like, <laughs> hey, Genesis. don't worship any other God. And like my question was like, other gods? I was wondering why mm-hmm. all the people were like, wait, there are other ones? <laughs> and keep using, using the words like us and we. Yeah, when talking no other about God himself. before me. It's like, oh, well, how many gods are there? That's kind of mm-hmm. crazy. I like uh, that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really uh, like that. John, yeah. I saw you mouth the words why during this, it's, that, that. It's, 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 well, it's, it's simply the gap that can't be crossed, isn't it? My favorite mm-hmm. God is Unkulun Kalu, okay. who is the, the South African creator God. And mm-hmm. he's just as good a candidate for the origin of everything as Jesus. Mm-hmm. Your, your knowledge of Africa is so awesome, John. I just got to say, from all the work that you've done, like, you know, like uh, collaborating with the uh, atheists that came over from South Africa and all that stuff, very, very cool. Uncle Kalu, Kalu who drops that in a conversation casually? Like, who just says that and just like, <laughs> anyway, back to cheese. Who else wants to talk about, you know, anything else? Guys, we're at the half break. We're going to do um, more stories of hypocrisy when we come back. Larry, can we? Can you take us out real quick? And then we come back. I can back. if I can bring up my prompt here. <laughs> Uh, you yes, haven't this, memorized it by now? Come on. Uh, it's been I 10 do, years. I do. <laughs> yeah, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Dr. Five, and this is Sunday, May 2nd. Continuing on with the show, let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year. ASK has over a 1,000 members, and we have weekly Zoom meetings during COVID. And starting May 11th, we'll again start meeting at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria in the Old City, live, face-to-face, out on the patio. Whoa. Uh, you can find this line. Uh, I mean, you can find us online on Facebook, meetup.com, or knoxvilleatheist.org. Just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meet up and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find mm-hmm. one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. One well, where we want to pick up. So I want to talk about stories of, oh, the irony and what it deal, <laughs> what it's like dealing with people who are very religious, but also want to throw some logic bombs at you at the same time, too. And you're like, well, what's all this religion in the background? Come on. 
let's look at the whole basket, right? Uh, George Brown, you had a story you'd like to share. What's going on? Well, see, I'm not, it's, it's sort of some reflections that are on my mind. Hmm. And one of them is, um, is that every once in a while, I start doubting what it is that I know. And sometimes I doubt the definitions of words. It's like okay. I'm, I'm using words, and all of a sudden I think, do I really know what that word means, despite the fact that I've been using it all these years? So uh, a couple of words that have come up lately in my mind are fascism and cult. I'm glad those are the words and not like surgeon and plumber, because it would be really terrible to go to a plumber. <laughs> or up like, and I, have, I don't have a, yeah. I don't have a hard time. Why do you keep charging me you? so much money? I just have a leaky pipe. <laughs> or I go, I'm not my profession, I, but I, I find the best I can. I don't have a hard time defini defining surgeon and plumber, but you know, it's like... <laughs> It's like when people throw around the word, you know, considering the kind of, uh, what am I going to say, the fishbowl we've been living in in the United States over the last four years, is that's what's got me confused. And, you know, it's like, what's reality anymore? And, and, um, it's, it's been quite a ride for the last four years. So you're saying, so, like, is the irony then, like, people are using words in the complete opposite use of that word and applying I mean, it because frankly, I, I, I don't even know. Oh. So, you know, it's, it's like if we call person X, and you all know who I'm talking about, uh, a fascist, what is it that we mean? And so I go to dictionaries online and every definition is different. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I still don't know the definition of the word fascism. I know a part of it, but anyway, uh, let me move on to the next word. Okay. The next word is cult. What is a cult? If we accuse somebody of being a cult follower, what, what do we really mean? What does the other person mean when they use the word cult? So um, very important. You see, and, and so we're talking about irony. <laughs> the The word cult seems to mean. Now I'm I'm inventing a definition. Please, please, based on it. other definitions that I have read. Uh, so, so the word cult means somebody who doesn't agree with me. You know? Basically, yes. <laughs> Basically, <it's, laughs> you know, it, it has a religious connotation, and it is. It is um, essentially a, a set of values that are different than the prevailing set of values, which, but having lived through what I think is a cult in the United States for the last four years, yeah, the prevailing values are a cult. It's just a big cult. Yeah. They're all cults, basically. In my book, I've always called... I don't have the definition yet. <laughs> what religions call other religions is what I would just define as a cult. But I do like the idea of like, what would you? What did you say? It was so perfect. It's like, they don't agree with me. That's a cult. It's That's cult. how I... That that was my beginning on this. I love yeah, it. Yeah, so, so I mean, I mean I here I am. Time. Look, I'm an urban person. I've, I've lived sure. in cities, uh, aside from 10 years in rural Connecticut, I'm stuck in rural Tennessee right now. And, and I'm used to the kind of, I don't know, prevailing thought patterns, I guess, that go on in metropolitan areas where we have what I feel is what is truly great about America, which is diversity sure. of people, sure. diversity of backgrounds, diversity of opinions, diversity of sexualities, this, this, all that. Stuff. that. Yeah. yeah. Everything. That's what I'm used to. Mm. And, um, so I'm, I'm living now in a place, it's a city of 14,000 people, and um, I'm living in rural America. Mm. I'm going to really tell you this too. When I moved to Kentucky and I started doing my SE, Street Epistemology Conversations in Kentucky, I was very deathly, I was very, very worried. I was only going to run into one kind of person, one kind of idea, and one kind of mindset for all my conversations. And even before Boudreaux kindly reached out to me and showed me a really great, you know, group, even when I went to the atheist group that was there, it was, it, it was terrifying how similar minded everyone was. And so I'm really happy Eric reached out to me and showed me 
many different lights in Kentucky in terms of thoughts and mindsets. But I'm also glad that I kept doing SE and having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people uh, because it showed me the wealth of diversity there was, even if the impression that I had was different. And I can tell you the weight of that impression that everyone is the same and everyone's you know, only thinking one thing is a very powerful weight, but it's not necessarily a real, uh, it's not a real model of the reality. Cause it wasn't until I started coming out in my job as an atheist that other people started coming out as atheists too. And I started to realize, oh, I thought everybody here was Christian. Turns out there's like only three Christians in this group of like 40 people that work here. <laughs> we just never really talked about it and just let them kept dictating the, 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 the course of, you know, conversation and, and, and relationship and, and vibe in the office. So it's worthwhile to, to, like I said, what Larry says, um, start atheist groups. It's worthwhile to seek, you know, people, and it's worthwhile to like, you know, billboard yourself as a non-believer, in my opinion. Larry, what's up? Just as a reminder, uh, if you don't come out of the atheist closet and stay in, uh, even the, Christ the atheists around you who could be your new atheist friends think you're an, a Christian. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the default. Yep. So mm -hmm. come out. And you got to fight the Form a community. And mm -hmm. I was helping someone move furniture into their house upstairs. And it was like two, it was supposed to be two big Christian guys who just came from a Bible study. Cause that's, you know, Christians, they love to talk about that. And only one showed up. <laughs> so I was like, Oh, I'll help you. I'll help you out. No problem. And he was like, yeah, Peter said he'd come, but John was having a problem. So Jesus, like all their friends have G uh, a biblical names. And it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not in my head. I'm just like, and in my head, it's like, I'm going to have to have, I, I'm going to have to say something. So I, I made a weird, funny comment. I was like, yeah, you know what it's like when your Bible study friends don't show up. So you have to rely on the neighborhood atheist to help you move furniture up. <laughs> and then everyone was just like, oh, that's nice. funny. And it yeah. just, it broke the ice, but everybody knew where I was coming from. And I think it made a good representation of what atheists are. Cause they're not just like this villain that's in their room. They're people right. that are out there, people that live in your communities. Yeah. George. George. Yeah, you know, um, that reminds me of in this little 14,000 uh, person city where I live, there is a kosher section in two of the supermarkets here. All right. Somebody is buying this food. Who is it? <laughs> Isn't you it know? you? It's you. With the <laughs> so, in addition to me. Yeah, so, and, 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 and I go to the supermarket and I find Japanese food items. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a Japanese factory here in my town. Okay. Denso. The, the, the city where I live is a center for car parts manufacturing. One of those factories is a Japanese owned factory, Denso. So maybe there's some Japanese managers or something, you know? Yeah, and, maybe and I've seen Confucius people. I've seen some people around here sure. wearing um, uh, hijabs. Okay. And um, and there's some older women who are wearing what we could say in Yiddish shmatas on their heads, which means rags. Okay. <laughs> and and so who are they? You know, <laughs> and and then there are the different kinds of Christians and the 167 official Baptist churches that are right. here. And so, I guarantee you, in all those churches, it's not 100% Christian. I've yet to walk into a Christian church that is 100% Christians in that church. Tell me more. What do you mean? Dread, Dread we can we can talk. We yeah. can talk about the show. Dread, what do you got? I was just going to point out that uh, uh, George was talking about kosher second sections, mm. um, and of course that's based on a Jewish uh, ideology or theology, and so is organic. So when you have an organic section in a in a, a grocery store, that is also based strictly on ideology. It has nothing to do with nutrition, science, or anything else. Definitely not it science. It has to do with ideology, right? So yeah. um, we're just trading one thing for another, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> George Buffalo, I'd love to get an opinion of hypocrisy or irony from you. We got some from all around everybody. What do you got? Mm, yeah, for me, it's the constant uh, uh, mockery of science that very often Ooh. Christians yeah, <laughs> will will apply. Well, they the rely on it day in yeah. and day out. And right. uh, so, you know, the, the one the, the episode I'm thinking of was a was a, a minister, and I happened to meet him in a parking lot. We're standing next to his new car, and he wants to show me his new car. And and uh, you know, so he's got this new technological gadget to satisfy his uh, his 
needs, but yet he's mocking um, science and right. how Christians will literally mock science and then, of course, practice science in just about every aspect of their lives. Anyway. How universal is that? <clears throat> it's, I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say everybody, but I have had arguments or had conversations with people who will chastise and use science in the same breath or sentence to both denounce science and use it to support their God belief. And, and like in the exact same phrase. And it's mind boggling. It's very, very bizarre. Yeah. And George, I, that's a great I, one. With, with students, uh, mostly undergraduates in this case, because it, at our university uh, uh, at Kentucky, about 60% of the students that come in are, are very religious, you know, and they're very often Baptist. Yep. And they believe in creationism and they don't believe in evolution. So the challenge is to try to get them to think for themselves. But um, in having discussions with them, they would often, again, take this approach of, of mocking the science if there was some aspect that, that they could verbalize. Right. And it doesn't take long to change their minds because they're probably already, a lot of them are, are ready to be uh, you know, educated in many different ways. Uh, but even there, it's, it, it's a matter of their practice. It's what they're used to, what they grew up with. And then they're just, without thinking about it, they're just applying it. John. Yeah, I met that when I was teaching because uh, I had a class of A-level biology students and I started by doing evolution. And uh, at that moment, <laughs> my class diminished by one. <laughs> because oh, okay. The, the, the parents of one of the, the girls objected to her being taught evolution. <laughs> so she went off to study something else. Anyway, I also wanted to examine this, this word cult because... It's ripe for hypocrisy, isn't it? A cult is always somebody else. It's, it's, you don't apply, I'm not in a cult. Nobody accepts that they're in a cult. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a word that they use about other people. It's, now, other, it's otherwise. Yeah. I, so I don't know if this is Umbridge, but Dread, uh, Boudreaux, you're a big Star Wars fan. There are cult aspects to that. Are you aware that you're in a cult? Do you, would you be willing to call yourself in the Star Wars cult? Uh, <laughs> of course not. Oh, okay. So it is accurate. John, you're absolutely true. People who are in cults do not admit that they're in cults. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. And, and that means that a cult is probably a smaller organization than a mainstream one right which of, which of course is geographical it depends where you are mm. what what qualifies as a cult and how big or how small where's the boundary i don't know but yeah. so, even the small cults call the big religions cults so mm -hmm. like everybody from my outside perspective is in a cult it's mm -hmm. just a question of is it a big cult or a small cult it's not like yes yeah. oh, bujo what do you got Maybe just a fair distinction here that I think if it has like a negative connotation, yes, you you wouldn't consider yourself in a cult. But with the Star Wars thing, I, I I totally feel that my whole family's in a cult. We even commented that we probably don't go a single day without mentioning something Star Wars or Sam so, Harris or Sam Harris. <laughs> Sam Harris, yeah, too late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, Scott, um, you're next. What's up? Hey, I just had a question. Um, mm -hmm. W was not all religions started as a cult? Like, was Christianity once a cult? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It was considered by the Romans ah. a cult. Yeah, they would throw you into lions because of that. And they had to literally make up gods <laughs> that were from the Roman pantheon to satisfy the Christians when they were willing to roll them in. So, like, all the saints that you have, a lot of the holidays that we have are just pagan holidays or Roman translated things. We got weeks of the days of the week are named after Roman gods. Like, no, Christians don't really think about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, it's just like, I will name seven days after these pantheon of gods. It's a very bizarre. Very, thing. Somehow yeah. there's a progression, isn't there, from a cult, which is a small thing, yeah, small theoretically, yeah, to, to a faith, which is a bigger organization, or and a obviously religion. there's some, yeah. there's some sort of, you know, or a religion, and <laughs> there, there must be some sort of. I don't know, exam or qualification to pass. number of people. No, yeah. it's all the same thing. It. It's just popular cults or not popular cults. It's all the same thing, John. I'm telling you. Are we guilty? So are cults necessary? 
They so are both necessary like be... and contingent. I don't. I didn't believe. Yeah. That. <laughs> You're necessary. Uh, <laughs> we're all guilty. We're all guilty. <laughs> one person at a time. One person at a time. Larry, you are next. Then we'll go to Dread. Yeah. Uh, what gets me is when uh, you know, the hypocrisy of, real, of Christians claiming that they're not a religion. Uh, they say we're not religious. We have a relationship. Right. with Jesus, right. but then they take advantage of every religious freedom law that there is, and they claim religious tax <sighs> exemptions, yep. And but then they act condescending and self-righteous toward anyone who is actually non-religious, which right. kills me. Yeah, it's like, I'm not religious, but I'm not an atheist. It's right. like, oh, what are you trying to say? What's going on there? Dread. And atheism is a religion. How many times have you heard that? I've heard that so I know. Yeah, that's and the problem with in my problem with these big cults is that they get to develop new usages of words that only muddy the, the actual right. intention mm -hmm. definition of it. So mm -hmm. that's why I think it's important to outline you're an atheist with the A word and show, hey, I'm an atheist. If you have questions about what the atheism is, ask me. Don't go to your pastor. Don't go to your Christian friend. Talk to me. Very I'll good. tell you all about it. Dread. So uh, here I was going to make a, a distinction here. So a cult could be considered a, an emerging delusion <laughs> and a religion, a prevailing delusion. Social. Yeah. It's, uh, I, it's all I'd the say. same. You guys, you guys, you guys, it's all the same. It's just a question of yeah. whether people are comfortable calling themselves yeah. in a cult or not. Yeah. Star I've Wars always, has its own religion, doesn't it? Doesn't it have yeah. multiple religions in it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Aren't there like I've always just thought it was Star a, Wars? Uh, yeah, a major Jedi. size. Yeah, Jedi is a religion. Right? Yeah, Jedi is an actual religion in real life, or like people have taken the Star Wars ideology and turned it into religion. I'm just saying, look at yourself in the mirror, honestly, Eric. That's all I'm trying to say. Though, <laughs> George, going back to Buffalo, the idea that people will diminish science and then also uplift it only when it serves their own purposes. Like, indeed, I have seen that so many times, and it makes me <clears throat> upset. What do you do when that happens? It's a matter of not even knowing they're doing it. Mm. that bothers me um mm. you know for example this minister that's standing next to his new car and telling me about how much he likes his new car but yet denying science how can right. you do that yeah that's that's total hypocrisy you know what well, using me? a cell phone and gps too all at the same time right like when there's a problem and someone says well, well i'll pray for you but if it's like their car and it's a spark plug issue it's like well i did some diagnostics here i use my multimeter my mechanic says xyz i'm thinking i'm going to order these things my these values are a little bit off my gas fuel mileage mixture isn't very it's like you're you're using factors for such a small thing just spark plugs in your car <laughs> yet when it comes to like the biggest thing like how you should treat other people the 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 fate of how you impact the world your consequences of your actions you're like no this big magical thing that's mm. the answer. It's yeah. if you if you cared as much about your God as you did about spark plugs and maybe put in half amount of work as you did to figure out if your God belief was faulty as you would your spark plugs were faulty, I think you would come to substantially different con uh, conclusions. Yeah. Anyway. If you were lost in the middle of the wilderness, what would you rather have? No. A prayer or a GPS? Right. <laughs> I think right, right, we could all right. figure out which yeah. one we'd rather have. Yeah. Uh, prayer, right. Scott, oh. go for it. Yeah, just to piggy tail off what you were talking about, uh, especially with uh, regard to um, morality, mm. like, uh, you know, the, a theist like a Christian or a Muslim or some other religious person would say, well, unless you can ground your morality in an objective standard like God, then your morality is just subjective. It doesn't mean anything and right. it's an opinion and it's and it's faulty and and but our morality is based on the absolute um, objectivity of our God. And so our moral basis is a lot stronger and more sensible than yours. But then you could just ask them a question like, is rape objectively wrong in the past, present, and future, or killing homosexuals for being homosexual? Is that objectively wrong in the past, present, or future? Or slavery, slavery objectively wrong, past, present, or future? Yeah. And of course, in that case, they're going to kind of they're going to kind of be in a bind because their holy books all support that kind of immorality. Yeah, and so they've got a little problem on their hands right there, which is ironic. And I also don't like the idea of subjectivity is a bad thing because we live in a world that needs to have nuance. We live in a world that changes and where cultures develop and things are constantly evolving. It's good to have the ability to change your mind and be able to readjust 
what certain things are and what the values of certain things are. And in my opinion, a system that is subjectively framed worked, such as, hey, we all came up with a list of things that we don't like and what we do like and what we value, and we can objectively come up with rules to support that framework. We can say, hey, we don't want to be killed, right? We subjectively <laughs> determine that. So let's make a rule that says don't kill each other, right? Okay, great. That's the whole Maybe process of creating laws. That's the whole law. Mm -hmm. That's what morality is in a sense. It's your processing what the cultural uh, values are and coming up with morale to suit it. And you can come up with like the best set of rules or a more optimal system that can, you know, acquiesce to what everyone wants to have to have a, a needlessly harmless life, which is one of the best things that we could have, like a life without any needless harm. Though we're kind of, I'm kind of translating. I do want to throw this out. Irony that I see in the Bible, I see a lot of irony in the Bible. Uh, the Goliath David fight, a lot of people purport that as like, man, look at this giant, giant with like a club or a sword or whatever. But all David has is like this tiny, you know, tiny long projectile weapon that's way better than a sword in my opinion already but he also has this <laughs> giant god on his side and i'm like well then that makes the dude with the sword the underdog like the underdog is not yeah, david right. in that story like we keep reporting that story is like this is a great underdog tale. It's like no this guy has magic plus a gun mm -hmm. <laughs> right. gets a guy with a stick that's not a fair fight this is not yeah. a fair fight even if you took out the god <laughs> yeah. so he brought a god and a gun to a stick fight yeah yeah, yeah. Like, you can't, you can't do that. <laughs> there was no hope whatsoever and I, I i can't tell you how many times people were like well i'm the david in this solution was like no because that would make you the jerk john what do you got <laughs> on the subject of um, uh, god on our side mm. was, oh. there ever, was, was there ever a, a a contender in a conflict who said god wasn't on his side right <laughs> yeah, you have two I want them, and they're both Christians, and the one says, that I just want to thank God. That was saying, yeah. yeah. I, I just want to uh, interject very quickly. There was once an automobile named Goliath. It was a brand of car that was a subsidiary of Borgward, which was a British, uh, a German car. And uh, the, the, the Goliath was anything but huge. I mean, it was, it was a small car, which was underpowered with a two stroke engine. I don't know why they came up with the name Goliath for an automobile. There's irony. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Guys, yep. we're at the end of the show. Let's do a quick round out. George Brown, Brooklyn. What's something that you'd recommend we check out before next week? Yeah. Um, there is a television program that on our American um, public TV, there's a program that is trotted out every a few years when the local national uh, public t TV station is trying to raise money. The name of this program is Sid Caesar's Riders. And Sid Caesar was the comedian who really developed comedy on television. And this is a panel discussion for two hours among the people who wrote the material for that TV show. Cool. And they do some bits on uh, routines, comedy routines, which are absolutely priceless. And so if you have a chance to see Sid Caesar's writers. Is that SID or show. CID? How do, you, how do you find that? Uh, SID. 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 Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you, George. Buffalo. Got anything you'd recommend uh, we I, check I'd up before like, in the next like week? Hear, I'd like to hear a discussion of the the Satanic Temple, um, and why did they call themselves a Satanic Temple? Next week, maybe we can talk about that. How about well, that? Yeah, we'll bring it up. It's, it's it's a very interesting organization to me, uh, but you know, I, We've had I'm some being on the show by the way. I don't understand why you try to start something new by challenging the old. Mm -hmm. interesting they've had okay. good success yeah yeah uh Boudreaux, anything you'd recommend we check out before next week well uh since i had live in-person band practice Yay. Uh, last week it was great so i should have some some videos to post uh in the coming weeks of some little band practice uh playing around we're doing so now help me out does does when you are practicing your band and i'm not trying to correlate two different stories here but does the wife and kids find a good reason to go gardening outside during that time? Or do they, you know, they just <laughs> go to the Actually, store. Uh, ironically, you know we do need some more flour. <laughs> <laughs> ironically enough, 
my my wife who generally doesn't love the the beating of the drums and the bass when uh -huh. she's right up the stairs she said i was like hey how was it was that sound okay she's like you know what it sounded sounded normal again it sounded nice. like we we're getting back to normal uh, 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 there's your sweet story that was a sweet story <clears throat> scott anything you'd recommend before next week uh wow um not really i mean there's i'm gonna be doing a little steel man debate tomorrow tomorrow yeah on a board skeptic channel but that's if you're into all those sort of debates and things of that nature but if you'd like to tune in tomorrow i think around five o'clock eastern time i'll be doing that well nice. can you <clears throat> real quickly flesh out what a steel man argument is Yes, so a steel man is when you take the opposing position in a, in a debate just to kind of lay out um, the, the argument that points. your usual, yeah, the best points that you can come up with. So if it's kind of fun just this to argument up. in a good way. This is, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm going to give you all the credit possible. Here's your best Maybe case even scenario. better than they could. Yeah. Right. Here's your best case scenario because I've heard it's still defeat the argument. And it's still bad. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Why? Why Samuel L. Jackson is the best Jedi ever? Okay, let me let me take this. <laughs> we'll just say if purple lightsabers were the best lightsabers ever, we still mm -hmm. have problems. Because <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Anyway, anyway, uh, uh, John, you have a bunch of stuff to plug. So would you mind yeah. telling me some of the things that we should check out? Sure, sure. Yeah, since the beginning of 2021, I've been doing an, a weekly global atheist news show, which is a 20 minute show that is a review of all the ways that in the, in the last week that religion has impacted humanity. Mostly it's in negative ways, but occasionally mm -hmm. there's a little, a little you know, glimmer of goodness in there. And that's the show about those glimmers. I want to know about those glimmers. <laughs> I, I put those at the end to, to end on a light note, you know? Okay. Uh, so I want to promote that show. It's on a free thought productions, YouTube channel. And I, I don't, is the chat public here? Because yeah, you, you. I put, I put the link in there. People can click on that. And the other show that I do follows free thought productions, global atheist news about there's a 10 minute gap so that you, go to the toilet, you know, or fill up your beer. It goes out at 3 p.m. on your time, Eastern Standard Time, on a Saturday. Hmm. And the following show is my version of Ask an Atheist, when I have a guest, and we discuss something of interest to uh, people who are of a like mind, people of kindred spirits. And Very Ty fun. has kindly agreed to come on my show in the near future. Very nice. Very nice. Very Thanks. nice. Thanks, guys. Oh, when you're pointing, you were pointing at where my face was in Zoom? Yes. yes. I, everyone has a different oh. arrangement. So I, I, when right. you did that, you I was where seeing it's be. G? What's G mean? Well, but in <laughs> Britain, they have a different sign language system. So that's that's just weird. Yes. My brain. I'm sorry. Dread Pirate. Anything yes. you recommend we check out before next week? Also, cute dog, by the way. Very, very cute dog. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have a YouTube channel and I live stream this on Sundays at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So um, you can come check me out while we're in action and uh, somebody's throwing a ball around. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dred, um, what channel? What's the name of the channel? The, the channel is Mind Pirate, M I N D P Y R A T E. And okay. uh, if you haven't joined, please do. I'm looking for 13 more subscribers to get me to 100. No. And then I can customize my channel. So uh, uh, thank you for you guys for having joined already. <laughs> I appreciate cool. it. Oh, uh, also, I just wanted to say that we ought to touch maybe next week on, on the revocation of the American Humanist Association's uh, Humanist Award of the Year to Richard Dawkins. Yes. That, that just happened. And yes. the revocation give this some thought okay. and, then, and then have a cogent and intelligent conversation about it next week. I'd love that. Sure, sure, sure. Very cool. Larry, go on and take us out. You can find me on Let's Chat. You're on this channel probably right now. See you guys. Okay. Uh, my own content is found on digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for all of our radio show archive, uh, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. You can find my YouTube channel by searching for Doubter5. Uh, my book, uh, Atheism, What's It All About, is available on Amazon. 
And if you have questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org and we'll answer them on future shows. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can go to recoveringfromreligion.org. They have people there that can help you with that. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, uh, this has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next Wednesday. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>